Citizens of the Internet, I'm Static Buzz, and with me is Oz. Um, this is the episode eight of Gaming Watch Weekly yes. for August nineteenth, two thousand nineteen. How you yes. doing today, Oz? How you doing, man? I haven't talked to you pretty, in a couple of days. Pretty good, pretty good. It's uh, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know that feeling. Uh, it's been way too busy lately. We got uh, lots of things on our calendars for this month. Uh. Outside of this, yes. Yes. And this, yes. <laughs> it's, it's really busy. It definitely really busy. is. Especially uh, after the 27th. Is, so the 27th is going on, and then I got some. I got to leave town like the 28th. So I'm like, boom, going to Fort Collins, Colorado. Uh, so, going for work? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll be there until Friday. Gotcha. Well, uh, I guess we'll jump into the news then. So Sure. Let's right. do it to it. All right, so oh, actually, I'm a, I'm not even keeping track of what I'm supposed to be reading here. Yeah. So what we got on tap for the show today? <laughs> Diablo three, Diablo three ongoing and future support. World of Warcraft Classic Realm overcrowding before launch. Anthem's lead producer leaves Bioware. THQ reveals upcoming games and financial report, and those are unannounced games up until they announced them. And they're still kind of unannounced because they haven't given them, but uh, new Need for Speed game announced, S Minecraft Super Duper Graphic Pack has been canceled, a new Sword Art Online game, and PS4 gets a Zelda Breath of the Wild clone? What? Mm, interesting. So, alright, so I'll jump into the first one here, and this is sure. Diablo 3 ongoing support. There was a blog post on Blizzard's official... Diablo 3 page that talks about ongoing support for Diablo 3. Mm -hmm. I believe it was put up by Brandy, but they don't put the names up uh, of the people on there. And no. I don't remember Brandy's last name, so uh, if you guys know what I'm talking about, then you know, put down in the comments, because I don't remember her last name. and She didn't put her name on the article. That's just kind of what I heard. Anyways, mm -hmm. this is what they said. They said, uh, we've heard your feedback about wanting new ways to play and to change up your gameplay experience. Based on your positive feedback and increased participation in themed seasons, we think we are moving in the right direction. Continue to let us know how we can make your adventures even better. Our crew is hard at work crafting additional themed season, a new set for each class, dozens of legendary powers, and some class balance changes. Quality of life and the occasional gameplay system updates are also within scope. As we evaluate how we can keep bringing new magic to the world of Sanctuary, these updates won't arrive all at once. So if you don't see something for your class right now, don't worry. There's something coming for everyone. And yeah. they went on to specify that they want to be clear and they want to be communicative. Um, one thing we've been asked for is to clarify what our plans are, what exactly we're working on, and where the future will take us. This blog yeah. is one of our first steps, more frequent presence and interaction from our community team on uh, our new forums, especially around patches and PTR cycles. We want to be able to talk and interact with members of our community around the world on a regular basis about the things we love to bring that bring us together Diablo I thought it was pretty interesting that they're going to be adding a new set for each class and they're going to be mm -hmm. adding dozens of legendary powers I took the dozen, dozen of le, uh, dozens of legendary powers I can't talk today as yeah. meaning that they were going to take some of the legendaries that didn't have special powers and add some to them possibly um, I read it that. I mean, I kind of. That's what I kind of took from it. Or maybe new legendaries, but they didn't say new legendaries. Had new legendary powers, so that's gonna be a wait and see. Is this maybe they'll, maybe go ahead. they'll in some of the legendaries from WoW like they they they've done? I mean, they brought in Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Windseeker, so maybe they'll bring in Sulfuron or or, or, or whatever. You know? Yeah, that would be kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, you think this would be enough to get you back playing again, or? I've 
I've never quite left Sanctuary. I mean, I I, I like playing Diablo. Um, the problem is, is I kind of get tired of playing it by myself. You know, uh, it's like, gotcha. okay, I can do so many things on my own. And, you know, I, I will play like the seasons a little bit, but then it's like, well, okay, I've, I'm bored now. So you can only do it so much before it, there needs to be something else. And hopefully this is it. So I'll, we'll have to try it out and see what happens with it. Yeah, I wouldn't mind powering up uh, another character for the next season and seeing where it goes but I don't know if it, in the next season is actually going to have the new sets. I kind of want to see what they do with that because I'm, yeah. a, I'm a demon hunter and yeah. they have a skill that's called uh, well I don't know what it's called but it's a bolo skill and there's okay. a build that I would use when I was level up where I don't remember if it's a bow or a quiver. I think it's a quiver. You would get the quiver, and instead of normally with the bolo, it would wrap around and slow them down, mm -hmm. and then it would explode after three seconds or something. Yeah. With this quiver, it just automatically, instantly exploded as soon as it hit their target, and then poof, you know had an AOE effect. Oh, okay. And I remember something like that, yeah, because that's what I first played was a demon hunter. <laughs> if they were to make a set um, around that kind of build. I'm down. I'd be like there, no problem. Let me, let me do this. <laughs> but uh, it really depends on what sets they do, and for you know, it would probably also determine which class I played. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I were to do it again, I'd probably roll the uh, the necromancer because I haven't really leveled one to max level, so um, that would be fun. I've done necro, and they they are pretty fun. There, um, several ways of playing that that uh, class. So. <laughs> yes. So, all right, uh, next one is all you. Yes, so uh, it looks like uh, with WoW Classic, there is some uh, overcrowding going on on the, I'm going to butcher this, the Harad realm. I think that's what it is. But um, there was a post put out asking players to go to a different server because it was looking like if it was staying at the current rate or to keep going, we were looking at, 10,000 uh, people, our player queues to get in. So um, basically they're trying to push people over to a medium or low um, server. Now the other day I was on um, YouTube and I was watching a video about someone who was like, reasons to play on a server that doesn't have a popular YouTuber or Twitch player on it. And this was one of them that you know, they're going to be on there. They're going to be streaming. They're going to have 20, 30 people constantly rolling with them. And if it's anything like how it was in vanilla, you're going to get certain sections of the server that are going to lag because there's so many people there. Uh, I mean, remember during the ringing of the gong, like how bad that was back in the day? You're talking about AQ? Yes. Oh, yeah. Does, the, yeah. I don't, I don't remember how many times... I thought I got disconnected, and how many times I got disconnected during that event. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, so, I definitely remember that. <laughs> yes. So, now, I don't really know the technology behind what they're doing with Classic. I don't know if they're doing it like how it is on the current realms where, you know, you have that mesh where you can see a bunch of people running oh, around from different realms. The cross-realm stuff, yeah. Yeah, the cross-realm stuff. You know, to me, that's like the whole virtualized virtualization thing, which I do outside of this. But old school, it was that was it. You know, who was on that server was on that server. And if they were in like if certain areas got busy, the whole server would lag. And then, boom, like when during AQ, when they were ringing the gongs, I mean, it would crash the servers, you know. So um, my thing is, is like, yeah, let's just spread out, spread the wealth. I mean, they spun up a... Um, another server we're opening up the uh i can't even i'm gonna butcher that one the lag yeah realm so um proper name there lag at the end right yeah <laughs> so they're trying to urge people to go over there so i would recommend that as well i mean you're gonna it's well gonna be bad how are they okay so first thing that makes me worried about this this is coming from Kaivax, Kaivax uh, community manager. This is a post on the the forum, and he's yep. the one saying this. So, yep. 
he's got to be getting his numbers from official sources, you would think. Probably within inside the... He's probably getting the exact numbers from the network, or the server guys. Yeah. Um, I mean, because the other day, they just opened up name reservations. So people were just going in there and reserving names for the for did classic. They, did they all just pick the first server that came up or something? I... Honestly, don't know. I mean, I was there I multiple servers? It. Yeah, uh, yeah, we should I probably mean, yeah. do it and see how it works. Yeah, I mean, I have no problem with it. Look, taking a look at it. I mean, as last we spoke on the last uh, Gaming Watch Weekly, you were like, nope, nope, not gonna well, touch. Well, am I gonna have to pay for it, or is it part of my I subscription? Think, I think it's part of your sub. I think it's part of your sub. Well, then I would tinker with it. I don't see why I wouldn't tinker with it. But if yeah, I had to pay I mean, for it... Mm. Yeah, I agree with you on that. There's no way I'd pay another sub just to play Classic. Or even and 30 again, bucks to play Classic and then... Oh, my, yeah, no, yeah no, no, no. I mean, if I have to pay any more than what I'm already giving Blizzard on top of the money I give Blizzard anyways for all the other stuff, no. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I miss Classic a little bit, but I think once people realize that... Leveling is so much slower <laughs> in vanilla than it is in the current stuff. It's Unless like, they fixed it. I, I I think it's a straight up classic playthrough. Which patch do you think though? Think is it after be. AQ and all that or is it before all that? I, I, I honestly don't know. I mean if if it were me, I'd do one you know, the, the the launch. And then like introduce the features as it yeah, I mean, why not? I mean, this is what people want. They want to play through Wrath again, and they want to play through Cataclysm. Oh, they definitely want to go back to um, uh, the Burning Crusades. I mean, that's all I ever hear is, ah, PC was the best. And I'm like, okay, it was great, but uh, you know, it's got nothing on Wrath, you know? Why would, and I'm not you a can and I'm not do a it, baby. So I mean, You can I'm still do it. it. Start a new character. Yeah, but it's not reminisce you can't raid those raids i mean it, it's it's it's, yeah, it's one can. of those things well i mean you're gonna level beyond it at some point you know uh, it's it's not like it is during current content you're not going to exceed that you know so you, you, they want to go backwards and they want to relive why relive i've done it of, how many times have you raided those places i raided them to nauseum you know i don't need to do that again I mean, it's 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 nostalgia is what it is. It's what it is. They they, they miss the old, the old Let's, way of doing things, and I think they're gonna realize that it's not as great as having all this newer stuff out there. So I don't well, know. That's just me. I me. yeah, I don't I don't see it. That's why my whole thing is is I've been there. I've done that. I want new experiences. You know, I don't want to go backwards. That's why I'm playing Final Fantasy fourteen because. It's a new experience, you know? It's a lot well, of new I stuff. Mean, everyone misses the Baron's chat, you know? No, no. <laughs> no, that's the first thing you turn off. General and Baron's chat. You turn off that stuff, man. No. Uh, hey, man, I have the oh. t-shirt that says, I survived the Baron's chat. Oh, I, I wish I... I the Baron's chat. <laughs> I wish I would have had that shirt, got that shirt, but... Uh, uh, I think yeah. I still have a... Um, a cow hunter sitting in the barrens because it drove me crazy so much that I went to play Alliance. <laughs> the barrens is rough because you're there so long. You're there so long. It's yeah. just... So, yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? When does that come out? Do we know? Uh, towards the end of this month. I think it's... The... Let me look. Because... I thought it was the end of this month. Yeah, I don't really care about a name. I can, I'm creative. I'm creative the 27th, enough. Twenty seventh, honest. It's it's the twenty seventh. So, do we even want to try it launch day? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I will vote no because no. It, that, that's gonna be like everyone's gonna be like, "Oh my god, I, I I gotta play it, play it now, I gotta play it now." My thing is like. Let's let them get it out of their system, and then maybe we can go, <laughs> go tool ahead. around and be like, "Oh, I remember this." You know. All right. Well, it is a Tuesday, and we know we're busy Tuesdays. So yes. So maybe 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 the following week or something we'll uh, we'll try it. I don't know. Just let let the people get it out of their system. I think it's just gonna be a pain. Oh, I kind of messed up on some of these here. Hmm. On the way I tagged them, I missed one. 
It's all good. All right, so I guess next story. We'll figure out the wild classic thing another time. Yeah. <laughs> so Need for Speed Heat has been announced. Uh, Electronic oh. Arts has announced Need for Speed Heat to be released November 8th, which means that's a short time turnaround time from hearing that it's uh, released and all that. So uh, that long is quick. Yeah, it's pretty quick. Alongside the announcement, they have released a trailer. The trailer description had this to say, Hustle by day and risk it all at night in Need for Speed Heat, a thrilling race experience that pits you against the city's rogue police force as you battle your way into street racing's elite. Um, it looked like a Fast and Furious type of game with street racing and cop chases and all that. I, I personally haven't played Need for Speed game in a long time. Oh, God, it's been forever since I touched Need for Speed. But this, forever. This game does look good to me. I mean, I, I, I'm not knocking the look and feel of it from what I've seen, but they haven't reviewed well late, lately, so... I probably won't touch it, just because I've kind of grown away from those games. I, I, I don't know. Racing games just don't really do they're... Back in the day, loved them, but I don't know. I need a story. That's what I like now, story. <laughs> well, that one might have your, your story. Rogue cops and you're trying to go up in the world of street racing? I don't know. I guess. We'll just... Uh, probably not, but we can keep an eye on it. Wait for the reviews is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I agree. All right, so you had an article about Wolfenstein Youngblood... Young Bloods next patch will let you pause sure. in offline mode. What's that about? So it looks like fans will finally be able to uh, get up and use the bathroom in the middle of uh, something. <laughs> so patch, uh, what is it? Uh, looks like in up in the update uh, 1.0.4. Um, in the offline mode, there is going to be the ability to pause the game. So. But you not know, online. Guess, not online, but <laughs> offline, you can pause it, which I thought was weird in the first place. Why can't I pause it, you know? All offline games should have a pause button. I mean... I just think back of the World of Warcraft uh, South Park game and... Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> Mom! Bathroom! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was bad. Uh, uh, th that was probably, still to this day, is probably my favorite South Park episode. Oh, it was pretty epic. That one was really, really yes. epic. Yes. So, basically, uh, um, 1.0.4 arrives this week. Then, um, in the next, in the following days, uh, for PS4 and Xbox One, and then the Switch a little bit after that. And I didn't include everything in the notes because it's a big patch. But this was the big part of it: is you can pause now in yes. offline mode. So if you're a <laughs> Wolfenstein Youngbloods fan, go read the patch notes. <laughs> yep. Yes, yes. I wasn't going to read all of that because that was a lot to read. Uh, <laughs> I apologize. I'm still waiting for a sale on this one. When it gets down to 15 20 bucks, I'll pick it up and try it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, it's got some good reviews, but I heard it was fast. Kind of like uh, when I was all excited about... Um, what was it? Uh, I can't remember. It was the one, I think... Call of Duty Ghost, where they had the dog in it. I was all excited for that, and then six hours later, I was like, "What the hell, man?" That was it. It's all you get. That was it. Six it's hours. It. Go play I'm multiplayer. Like, <laughs> then, yeah, and, then, and, and you know me, I'm a huge multiplayer fan. So, but it was like, my thing was, you based this, you sold it to me as I, I was like a dog handler, and this dog was going to play such a huge role, and then he gets injured like halfway through, and then the rest of it. <laughs> Damn it. They, they call that in the industry bait and switch. <laughs> yes. Yes, I fell for it, and never again have I played a... Uh, um, Call of Duty for Call the Duty. single player? Yep. yep. You've never played a Call of Duty since then? Yep. You. I, Oof. I got burned on that one, man. I was pissed. That <laughs> just, sounds just like it. Saying, man, don't sell me something and then not be there. You yeah. Know? I was like, oh, yeah, you got him for like three missions, and then he's injured, and whatever. <laughs> Yikes. Well, <laughs> speaking of multiplayer, that's where you get the racing games. Racing games yes. is way more fun multiplayer. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I would agree. Mario Kart's boring by itself, but when you get a couple people together, Mario Kart's great. So. It's a, yeah, then, then it's a party, right? <laughs> yes, then it's a party. All right, so now we got to go to what I consider some sad news because I was looking forward to this next Were you really? Thing. I was. I was. I think that the... Well, let me get into it, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Okay. All so, right. Minecraft Super Duper Graphic Packs ceasing development. So, uh, on their website, uh, the Minecraft website, they said, mm -hmm. a final update on the Super Duper Pack. Some of you might remember us announcing the Super Duper, Duper Graphic Pack, which is a mouthful, during E3's 2017. Super Duper was an ambition initiative that brought a new look to Minecraft. But unfortunately, the pack proved too technically demanding to implement as planned. We realize this is disappointing to some of you. There was a lot of enthusiasm for Super Duper from inside and outside the studio, but unfortunately we are happy with how the pack's performance across devices. For this reason, we're stopping development on the pack and looking into other ways for you to experience Minecraft with a new look. So yeah, they weren't happy with the performance. They said that it, you know, I can imagine you're taking a low poly game and you're 4K'ing it and you have all these squares and items all over the world that anybody can make whatever they want, put it down any place they want, and then you got these huge sprawling maps with... Oh, just imagine creative. I mean, have you seen some of the creative ones? They have like full oh, on dude. cities I and saw one. full buildings with furniture and everything. I saw one that was uh, of the Enterprise from Next Generation, and it was to scale. And, and, and I mean, I didn't go in and log into it, but it was, I saw it on YouTube. And I mean, this guy, I just. of. The Enterprise, you know. Yeah, they get they get crazy when they decide to make something out there, and they're just like, "Yeah, I'm gonna do it." I saw one where they did like the ice wall from, uh, or they did like the ice wall and the city behind it from uh, Game of Thrones and stuff like that. Have you ever seen I mean, some of the roller coasters that have the visuals as you're going through? Oh, no, you got to look up look up some of those videos. They're crazy, <laughs> crazy. I'm just saying. I, I used to think the game was a was a bloody joke, but it's really not. I mean, it gives you that outlet, but I don't have that much time. I just don't, you know. Well, it's it's a game that I play with my kids, so it's you know one of the, those type of games that we all can get in and do something together or apart, but still be in the same world. And so yeah. I was kind of looking forward to a 4K pack, but. Well, I mean, they might still be able to do a 4K pack, but they might have to approach it from a different angle. Oh, no. They said yeah. ceasing production. They're done. Oh. They're looking at other ways, so they're probably going to go to more theme packs and more, you know, which still could be cool, but, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it is a little bit of a bummer, but, I mean, the game I don't think was ever meant to be played in, in 4K. I don't know. It's a good game, though, I mean for what it is. I'm, I'm not knocking it. I used to make poke fun at it all the time, but I don't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it is very time-consuming, but it's also very relaxing just throw on some music, start building some stuff, and not having to worry about if it turns out right. Well, if it doesn't, I'll just destroy it, start over. I don't care, you know? <laughs> now, so, do you put your worlds usually external facing so people can come in and demolish it? Oh, no. No, no, no. Yeah. I, I don't have a server. We would pretty much play, uh, you know, on the Xbox so that we all would have an Xbox. We'd all join in. And usually the save was on my Xbox. So, yeah. Okay. So every time that they would come over and visit or whatnot, we would jump in there. And hmm. usually, though, the problem with them was they always were like, we want to start a new world. I'm like, but we didn't even finish what we were planning in the last one. <laughs> like 20 worlds where we had, oh, let's build this. And we start building it. And then, we never finish it. ADD, man. It, it can be a pain. <laughs> uh, don't don't get me started on ADD, man. I, 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 I don't know if I'm a believer in ADD, but that's just me. I know. I am. I mean, I've been diagnosed ADD, so that's why I constantly 
Why Median. Why is uh, it a condition, though? I mean, that's what I, I don't – we'll talk about it another time. Here's not the time. But, yeah, that's that's the thing I don't understand about it is – so we have a different attention span than I do. So mm -hmm. why is that a deal? But anyways, yeah. <laughs> speaking of uh, – I guess this would be a condition, this next one, kind of, right? Getting drunk. Yep. <laughs> So go yes. ahead, go ahead on that one. So uh, in GTA Five Online, there is a secret mission when you get really, really, really drunk. So getting blackout drunk has its benefits in GTA Online. Um, apparently, with the um, the Diamond Casino uh, pack, when you're our expansion, when you're in there, um, you if you you get really, really drunk, uh, I'm lost at where I was at, but um basically um you visit the public bar or uh or go up to the penthouse start knocking back a few shots uh the goal here is to get wasted and black out um and wake up somewhere else so um you wake up in uh, all different manners and places so the trick uh looks like it, it's just basically it sounds like the hangover <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is you have to own the penthouse in the Diamond yes. Casino. Oh, which, yes. I kind of skipped over that, but yes. That's not cheap. Yeah. That is definitely not cheap. So, uh, yeah. The one percenters are going to get to experience this. Yes. Yes. Um, but I just thought it was interesting that um, GTA 5 is still, like, still going strong. Oh, like, yeah. It's <laughs> still going. I, I was waiting for, like, six and now i mean they don't even really call it gta 5 they call it more like just gta online now because of pretty much yeah yeah so they kind of just converted over because if you go on steam it's still like 50 bucks you know they have not really brought it down in price at all no so. it's uh they won't because it's, it's so every once in a while it does but usually they don't so i don't know if you you know that that guy you have our channel subscribed to mr boss whatever mm -hmm. yeah he does a lot of stuff he had a video where they put up their latest poster outside their building for what they're advertising and they had the red dead redemption too and mm -hmm. recently they took that down so he's waiting to see what's going up at that building the problem is it's in another country so he only gets it second hand but uh he was speculating maybe a bully too or something Oh, I would love a bully too. Yeah, that would be kind really of interesting. <laughs> so, either there's some more DLC that we're gonna get announced that they'll throw a poster up for that, or we're gonna get an announcement for another Gamescon game. Gamescon should Gamescon should we should know by then. I'm you think then. something this week? Because Gamescon starts tomorrow, right? I'm thinking. Well, I mean, I mean, there's already been videos for it released. That's kind of where I got some of the information that I'm yeah. gonna be spitting out here in a bit. I don't know. I would love another bully, though. I really would. I mean, they're still writing the Red Dead Redemption 2 and Red Dead Online, so... But they could announce it and release it in a year, year and a half. Yeah, but they're not going to do another Red Dead right now. It's still... No, I'm talking about uh, a bully or a oh, yeah, GTA would... 6 or... I just don't see another GTA 6. I mean, they're still charging full price for 5 in the online stuff, so... <sighs> to me, it would have to be bully or... Maybe another IP. I don't know. What if they did like a whole ballad of gay Tony or whatever that was for GTA Five, like a whole like spinoff story? That would be fun. I mean, that was a good spinoff. I, I really are the ones where the, you're riding with the MC and all that stuff. That was cool. Um, but I mean, who knows? Yeah, we have to <laughs> wait and see on that one. You never know with Rockstar. No, no, you don't. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to get into the Breath of the Wild imitator clone that uh, is causing quite the ruckus, and it's called Genshin yes. Impact. And I'm actually looking at this, and I'm excited for it. It's coming to the PlayStation 4. It does look like it's going to get a North American release because they have a lot of English stuff, but they haven't really said anything. But... Uh, so early in August, there was a China Joy Gaming Expo. Genshin Impact was announced with a trailer. I don't think it was actually announced announced. I think they were just showing it to everybody. 
because uh, I was going back and I saw some stuff in June for it. So it's nothing. It's not a new game, but it's starting to get out there in front of people. So some yeah. of the attendees thought that it was too similar to Zelda Breath of the Wild and were not happy. Some took pictures of them playing Breath of the Wild or holding the game while flipping off the sign for Genshin or the Sony PlayStation sign. <laughs> really? And wow. then uh, one person went as far as to destroy his PlayStation 4 on the Expo floor. And that's what kind of blew this whole story up was the guy who busted up his PlayStation 4. So I just thought it was interesting, and the game looks really, really good. I mean, I can see where the art style... Well, let me just continue reading here. I can see similarities with the art style and enemy designs. They're, they're kind of similar. But past that, I don't see much that is the same. Um, well, the other thing you could do is climb in both games as well, and the climbing looks kind of similar. But uh, I personally welcome a Breath of the Wild clone on other, another console as long as it does, not, it does enough to differentiate itself and warrant being a whole game on its own. And I think this game is doing that because it's got features yeah. like uh, the ability to switch between four characters. It does look like it. And it has co-op. Um, yeah, so I just... I get why people think it's similar, and I think that it was probably inspired by Breath of the Wild with the cell shading and everything, but beyond the art style, beyond some of the enemies... The beginning of the story is similar where you wake up and you have amnesia and you got to go save somebody. But we don't know the rest of the story. That could just be the beginning, you no. know? You know? It doesn't... We don't know. But... <sighs> Who knows? People just get a little butthurt when it comes to games like that. Yeah, they do. Um, <laughs> the reason why I'm bringing this up is because now this game is on my radar and I'm very interested in it, so... I'll be following it closely until it's 2020 launch, so we'll have more information on it as we go. So yes. that uh, would you play something like that on the PlayStation 4? Absolutely, absolutely. You wouldn't be all butt hurt because it looks like Breath of the Wild or anything. No, no. I, I mean, what's to get all butt hurt about it? It's a completely different game. I mean, yeah might have some similarities but it maybe it drew its inspiration from that game but i mean it's they're not gonna just let a complete knockoff go to market i mean no it's not like they're calling the main character blink or something you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah now if you, if you did that you're like okay i mean it's and you gotta go save the queen yes and her name's belda <laughs> yeah so yeah i mean if you got that close to being a knockoff, then yes. But for me, it's like, why are we getting all butthurt about it? I mean, th there's absolutely no reason. Well, there is hurt. good reason, because China is notorious for knockoff games. As they always have been. I mean, what are you going to do about it, though? I mean, you want to yeah. start another trade war over it? I mean, come on. But I find it funny that the Chinese, that, you know, it's at a China, what was the name, the China... Joy Gaming Expo, that yeah. all the people, you know, the most of the people there were probably from China, and they're the ones getting all upset about it. It's not the Americans or the Europeans or the Japanese. No. It's the Chinese people that are at this convention, this expo, that are getting all bent. It's like, well, I mean, it's your country that's making it. Well, I mean, there's plenty of stuff going on over there right now anyways, so this is just another thing to add on to it. Yeah. But, I don't know. I mean, I'd still play it. I mean, if it was the right price, you know, yeah, I might pick it up and play it. See, I'm not um, one of those that gets all bent when I hear about games that are taking inspiration or copying a model of another game, like Pokemon and Digimon. Everybody was like, oh, no, why is Digimon doing this? It's just Pokemon with, you know... And I was like, who cares? It's more variety, you know? Just enjoy it. Well, I mean, it's... Yeah, it kind of... I, I think... Pokemon came first, but Digimon and maybe Digimon drew something from it. But I mean, it's still if you watch the two, they're completely different stories. Oh yeah, way I mean, different. There's a, a very few similarities, but um, I don't know. You just can't get mad. I, I, I don't know. You can get mad all you want. It, it's just not gonna not gonna solve anything. They're gonna publish it no matter what you do. So yeah. break all the Playstations you want. It's still gonna hit, go to market. 
Hey, I didn't. I didn't see anybody breaking Xboxes when uh, Halo the first one was announced, and they were like, they, nobody said this is Call of Duty in space. Nobody did that, you know. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> he uh, Halo to me was always more unique than any of the others, just because of the Master Chief and his AI um, Cortana. Their their bonding and what was you know none of the other games had that so and it also had more of a single player focus so yes which is always nice i would i I would definitely look forward to another halo at some point so speaking (laughs) of halo you want to take the next story sure so halo infinite's creative director leaves uh uh three four three industries and it looks like the departure was voluntary so, what is it? Tim Lango, the creative director uh, for Halo Infinite, has left the studio. Uh, Lango previously worked on Halo 5, Guardians. Um, this was reported by uh, Kotaku. Uh, Lango was part of uh, 434's leadership, um, the leadership shakeup they've had recently. Um, I guess he was moved out of the creative director's position into a couple other positions. And then I guess he decided it was time to leave. Now, prior to leaving, or, or prior to working at 343, he actually worked at Lucas Arts um, and uh, was working on their unannounced uh, Star Wars first person shooter. One of many it. unannounced Star Wars games that never made it out. Well, what was that one about the bounty hunter? I, I was so excited about that one. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, where was it? Uh, after after being canceled, he left. Um, and then uh, let's see. There are... so, you can... Yeah. So basically, I mean, I guess that's kind of the uh, gist of it. I mean, I could read the whole thing, but no, I think, I think we get the point. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the that may hurt a little bit with them work with the, at least the halo franchise losing your creative director well i'm not sure if they've already if they already moved him out of that role yeah he was already moved out of that role then um, they already and, had replacements so him going to another one looks more like somebody wasn't happy with what was being done while he was in that position and regardless if it was him or not he got the, he was the one that was taken out of the role somebody else was probably put in that role so you would think that it would be just a matter of time before he would move on yes it's just it's a shame because usually when something like this happens during a game's development you can usually tell at the point where they left and someone else came in there's usually a a subtle difference in certain aspects of the game where it's like oh we, you know they you you may or may not know but i mean there's been a few games that i, I noticed that with so i don't know well i th- thought that the video they put out on halo infinite was top notch yes. looks like they're focusing on the story and all that good stuff so as they should <laughs> as they yeah. should it's Halo's about the story, not about the online portion. That's just for funsies. <laughs> That's just for fun. they do have com- competitions, and I think even esports all. Oh yeah, oh, for yeah. It, I mean, so. don't get me wrong. There would have never been Red Blue. It had there not been a multiplayer type of mode, but you know, it's... yes, yeah. Red versus Blue. That was uh, good times. In Blood Gulch. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that kind of brings me back to another one that uh, I skipped over, but uh, Ben Irving, Anthem's lead producer, leaves Bioware. So mm. he wrote, After eight amazing years at Bioware, I have made a decision to move on and have accepted an exciting opportunity at another gaming company. Uh, that's pretty much all I wrote down about that one because I didn't really think it warranted going too deep into it. But, well, I you know, hey, it's Anthem, so... I mean, yeah. that game is barely clinging on. They um, just released Cataclysm or whatever it was last yes. week. So I I don't know, maybe... I need to download the patch and log in and check it out. But still, I haven't finished the main storyline, so... I have. Yeah. 
I don't know. I just was as much as the game was was unique and fun, the story was just like not fully there that draws me in, you know. The like, story is fully there if you don't rush to, from mission to mission. You've got to go and talk to people around the base. And that's the part that most people missed. So, taking the side quest that you might not hmm, want to. Okay. A lot of, I don't know. It will fill in some of those gaps and there's also a lot of the lore laying around. They could have done a better job at putting the story out front and they just they didn't. I, I I solely bought that game because of the hype train. It looked so good in the trailers. And then when I started playing it, I'm like, eh, this is okay. You know, but it just didn't capture me. It just really didn't. Yeah, the, it plays good when you're in the javelin. It's yep. a lot of fun. Up to the point where you got to cool your jets. <laughs> that drives me nuts. It drives man. me nuts, like, too. I'm uh. like... There needs to be a way to cool that or, or, or fix that because it's like those things shouldn't be overheating that quickly. I mean, they're jets. It's like yeah. A jet engine. A jet engine doesn't just burn for a little while and then cut out. I mean, I'd be like, what kind of technology are you giving us, man? This thing is not doesn't last thirty seconds. <laughs> but I mean, I like the javelins part. I like rolling around in a heavy javelin. Um, those were fun. It was between the the, the basically dps javelin and the the heavy tankish one those are the two i usually roll around in i but, ended up with the standard uh ranger one yeah the ranger that's the yellow one right uh well the there's the there's the first one you end up with that's the ranger yeah then, then there's the one you can that can float a lot this kind of like a caster yeah, I didn't. I, I haven't gotten that one yet. Unlocked. And then there's another one that's like a quick melee type. Yeah, I saw that one too. Which I've only got the 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 ranger and the heavy, and those are the two that I like so far. I mean, the other ones when I've seen other people playing them, they seem really squishy. Mm, they they are. <laughs> they are. So it's like for certain missions, it's like ah, eh, I'll just take the heavy because I'll, I'll I'll usually always do everything with the the, the ranger first, and then if I can't accomplish it, I'm like. I'll get in the big one. Okay. <laughs> Let me get in the big boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, both of these games need to take some pointers from other games that are out there, like uh, De Destiny 2. I went back and played some Destiny 2 uh, just yesterday, just to see, because everybody's like, oh, they've added so much stuff. There's so much stuff to do. And I was like, really? Really? Yeah. Really now? So I jumped in, and yeah, there's a lot of stuff to do. I was like, wow, mm. there's a lot of stuff to do. So when it comes out on the on Stadia and I get it for free because of my Founders thing, uh, if, if you have it on PC, we might have to jump in there. I have it on PC, but I still got to purchase the Stadia thing. I got to do that. Yeah. Or if you do that, we'll just jump in together. And uh, Cross Progression's there, so we could do that and play with our characters or start new, whatever we wanted to do. Well, I never got to the end in, in it, so um, we probably have to start over because you probably way out-leveled me. Um, I was no. playing with my brother, and then we kind of switched schedules. Excuse me, and I really didn't pick it up after that. I'd log in every once in a while. This still feels the same. I'm all by myself. Okay. Yeah, that's no fun. I'll play, first person play, or I'll play a single player game where I don't need anyone else. So. Yeah, you don't want to be playing by yourself. So maybe it'll be more fun mm -hmm. when we can play together. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so they, you know, like Halo Infinite, Anthem, even if it's Anthem 2, they need to give people things to do, uh, lots of things to do, not just run out and do this same thing you did 10 times before because you had to do it once through the mission once when the mission is over and now you got to do it just to grind out gear we don't want that we want things to do you got to give us things to do well final fantasy 14 figured that out so yeah <laughs> yeah there's so, tons of stuff to do in that game <laughs> yes so so that's where they need to take their you know just give people I mean, I hate to say it, but you just give them too much stuff because some people aren't going to do everything. They're just going to hyper-focus on what affects them, and then you have everybody else or some other people who want to do everything who have way more time. So 
it's better to have more stuff in a game to do than not enough and then make it overly repetitive. I mean, even if you look at like WoW and all the dailies you used to have to do, at least as you as they figured it out, dailies were less of a grind further on into the game, you know. Early on you're like, oh, go do dailies. But yeah. you know, by the <laughs> time you got to Wrath, it wasn't as bad, and then you know every expansion after that's not been as bad. You but I think that's more for it. the reward that you got, yeah, for doing the dailies. I think that's more of that. So there has to be reward for doing things, and the moment to moment has to be gripping and something that people want to do. That's oh, yeah. the if thing. You don't make the reward worth the grind. They're gonna be like, "F it, I'm out." Yeah, that's important. <laughs> What's that so new hotness over there? Huh? What's that new hotness game that just came out? That's what they're going to be like. Yeah. Um, so, like in WoW, it's always a pretty mount and some armor. You know, but it's it's always got to be first one's always got to be the mount, or when you get the exalted, got to yeah. be the mount, or people won't grind it. <laughs> exactly. So, they'll grind it for a mount. They'll grind it for a pet. They'll grind it for transmogs. Okay. Yes, yes, they will. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm guilty of it. I've done it too. So. <laughs> All right, let's uh, move on to the next one. I, we do have a lot to cover still, I think. Yeah, nah. no, a couple more. Yeah, just a couple more. All right, so THQ Nordic reveals some upcoming titles in their first quarter of 19, 2019's financial report. All right, so they said in a financial report these things to their investors, and one of them was Volition is deep in development of a brand new Saints Row game. The first full entry in the much loved series since Saints Row 4, which was released in 2013. You play the Saints Rows? Okay, so I played them up until they got overly ridiculous. Then but, I was like, I'm out. But that's when they got fun. Did you not play the one where you're the president and the aliens came in? That was stupid, though. I mean, but it, it's. It was supposed to I, be. Yes, and that's why I was like. So you, you started a game out where it was like, okay. And you have to build up the saints and then it's like okay it got a little more ridiculous but every time it gets even more ridiculous and I was just like okay this is beyond beyond stupid you know I mean I I, I haven't touched a saints row in a while I, well but I enjoyed was the, the first couple yeah well to me that was I, I didn't like it when they took it away from what it originally was so so you know. wanted to stay closer to GTA than where it, where it went to yeah, yeah. I I enjoyed running around and being a superhero with all these superpowers, fighting the aliens in their alternate dimension and stuff. That was a lot of fun to me. I guess. I, I mean, it it just didn't do it for me. It really didn't. Now, I mean, I did like some of the slapstick stuff in the earlier on ones, like running around with a big old dildo and beating people to death <laughs> with it. That was fun. But <laughs> you know, it was other than you, you, you know, but. Every one of them, it was like, okay, this is getting more ridiculous. And I guess I, maybe that's just me. I, 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 I gotta, guess I just didn't like the evolution. Of you got to loosen up there, Oz. You got to loosen up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, THQ went on to say that we have entrusted Damn Buster Studios with the Dead Island franchise, bringing the development of this key franchise to one of our internal studios. They are now leading development of Dead Island 2. Okay. Are you a Dead Island fan? I've played it. I played I don't know it if too. I would say I was a fan, but I played it. I'm not a fan. <laughs> it's not my thing. I, that much I can tell you. All right. So then they went on to say Fish Labs is working on a new IP as well as a number of unannounced projects. We excited to see Fish Labs grow as a major talent within our internal studio systems. Uh, who knows what that means? That doesn't really mean much. The next one, though, is kind of interesting. Last year, Deep Silver acquired the much-loved Time Splitter IP. We're delighted to announce that one of the series creators, Steve Ellis, has joined us to help plot the future course of this franchise. Time Splitters is a beloved game. I don't know if you played it. Um, nope. I didn't really play it, but I know that there's a lot of fans out there for it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I might have to go back and see what it, what the fuss was about. Um, I would agree. Depending <laughs> on uh, 
how old and outdated they look because uh, I have a real hard time going too far back. So, yeah, I don't know. And then they've also announced three new titles at Genesis, which were SpongeBob, Battle for Bikini Bottom. I guess that's an HD remake or something. Then they're remaking Destroy All Humans. Did you ever nice. play that one? Yes. That one's fun. That's a lot of fun. And Darksiders Genesis is a Diablo-type game within the Darksiders universe. Okay. So that one could be good. I do like the Darksiders. Yes. So that's good times. All right, and then I added one more, which is going to make it uneven, but uh, I had to. I know. I had to because this is one of my my favorite animes and favorite game series, even though the games are not... They're not eights or nines. They're more like low sevens usually. <laughs> <laughs> but I still like them. So uh, okay. it, uh, Sword Art Online, Alicization, Licorice. And uh, I don't know why they added the Licorice other than on their website they said that the flower represents certain things to the their culture and this game was supposed to have those things. I, if you're interested, go go look up the Sword Art Online Alicization Licorice on the Bandai Namco site. They have that information for the flower. But um, Sword Art Online Alicization Licorice, or however you say the flower's name, was shown at GamesCon with a trailer and a live demo. I, I watched them both. The game looks amazing compared to the other games. Um... They're uh, trying to remember the name of the other game. I can't think of it right now. It'll probably come to me like minutes after we stop the episode. But it looks like another similar game that uh, that's going to be coming out this year or next year. And mm -hmm. it's really good uh, graphic-wise compared to the other ones. But uh, the gameplay also looked like a giant leap forward because the action just looked really clean and everything. But... Uh, yeah, so I'm excited. I'm waiting for some more information, and when we get it, I will let people know. You can pre-order the game, and there's a date that shows December 31st, 2019. That is obviously a placeholder, so I do hope that it comes out in 2019, but I would not be upset if it got pushed to 2020 because there's so many games coming out the last part of the year that a breather would be nice, and these games, they're... they're grinding there's a lot of grinding going on yeah and you got some action going on in there so. yeah my daughter's over there like smiling and <laughs> bouncing around <laughs> uh <laughs> i would say hi but she couldn't hear me because you got your headphones on so it's all good yeah well, all right so we'll uh there. we got some release dates for this week some actually interesting games i think um remnant from the ashes coming out yep. august 20th on pc PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. <laughs> that yeah. game uh, could be interesting. Uh, I'm going to kind of wait for reviews on that one. Yeah, yeah, we've talked about that several times. <laughs> yeah. Um, Rad is coming out on August 20th as well on PS4, PC, Switch, and Xbox One. This one is pretty interesting. It's graphic style is meh, it's okay, but it's done by Double Fine, I believe, and it's a roguelike where you're in a post apocalyptic world that has had a nuclear fallout or been apocalypsed twice, mm -hmm. and, and you're living after the second one, and you you take a teenager out of your little safe city bubble into the mm -hmm. world because they lost electricity. And there's like muta mutations all over the place that you grab. So one of them, like you grab it and like you could throw your head as a, like a projectile at the enemies. Another one gives you like four legs like a spider or something. And just like these weird mutations. And you go as far as you go, can go. And then you can bring like money back so that you can buy better weapons and stuff for the next guy. Because eventually you're going to die. That's a ro what a roguelike is. So you're going to go out, you're going to die, and then you're going to have to start a new character without any mutations. So you get some progression there. So I don't know. I'm kind of – this is a cheap one. I think it was like 20 bucks. So I might grab this one and see what it's all about. Because this one's by – this is through Arc, right? 
Are you talking about Remnant? Yeah. Yeah, Remnant, I'm not sure who makes that one. But I'm talking about Rad right now. Oh, Rad. Okay, Mm. sorry. I was talking about... You got a synopsis of what Remnant is over there? Oh, I was just looking at it because... uh, um, I just closed it, but... Yeah, I wasn't actually sure what kind of game that was because it looked part single player, part uh, survival with other people, part wave horde yeah, mode type of thing really so weird. yeah i kind of wanted to see exactly what kind of game it was before i even thought about it yeah so um the third game is anunnaki um august 22nd which is weird because that's thursday on ps4 pc and switch i'm wondering if that date is wrong on metacritic so it possibly comes out on the 22nd i looked it up on the on steam and that's the date that they had too so it looks like it is the 22nd that's just a weird date but that's made by i am setsuna devs and i'm drawing a blank on the other games that they did but uh so it's an it's a role-playing game i think turn-based yeah well it kind of looks a little bit like diablo-ish in some of the art here like dungeon crawlerish, maybe. Yeah, it's an RPG. Uh, I think it's turn based, so yeah, it's going to have those kind of elements. It should be one to kind of keep an eye on and see what it uh, what it's like. It's got a price over there which, on what you're looking at. Uh, let me check again. Because I think Remnant from the Ashes was a full price sixty dollar game. Rad's twenty. I was wondering what an Anunnaki was. Pre order now. Because I do like those style of games, but I'm kind of watching my wallet with all the games coming out. You have to nowadays. Uh, Steam. Oh, it's going to take me over to Steam now. Um, so we're looking at pre-order for $44.99. All right, is that on sale or is that just a regular price? That's just the pre-order price. So $45, yeah. That seems, what, what, you know. Yeah. So not quite full price, but definitely not bargain. So I'll probably yeah. wait. I'll probably wait for a sale on that one, unless the reviews are just stunning. Well, it's published through Square Enix, but developed by Tokyo RPG Factory. So yeah, it's Tokyo definitely a JRPG. <laughs> yeah, Tokyo RPG does some good games. Yeah. Like I said, I am Setsuna, and there was another one they released. A year before or after that one, I, I get the timelines mixed up. That were that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, too many games coming out though. Well, for you, not for me. I mean, I, I'm kind of waiting for the triple A's. So. <laughs> Elitist. <laughs> well, I mean, nothing like there was. I think one last week that I would have done, but it, it was Switch only. So. Something mm-hmm. the something chain. I can't remember what it was. Astral chain. Watched. End of the month. Yeah, that's that's uh, August thirtieth. Well, I, I I watched that one. I'm like that one looks really good. Yeah, but you still haven't played okay. Near Automa Automata. You yeah. got to play Near Automata before you even. You, you that's a must <laughs> if you want to go yeah. to Astral Chain. You got to play, <laughs> and you can get that on PC. So okay, no no uh, no reason not to. But we've got, I've got Astral Chain. We've got Borderlands Three coming right mm-hmm. up in the next couple of weeks. It's gonna be uh, yeah. crazy. It's gonna be crazy. Uh, it's gonna uh, be crazy. Especially because Astral Chain, I've been watching some more videos on it, and there's like a detective part of it, and there's like uh, so. You're in a city that you believe is safe from the corruption of the outside world. It's mm-hmm. like a floating city, but the corruption starts coming in. And there's chimera that start coming through portals, and that's what you fight. But there's also like this red matter that starts popping up and corrupting people, and you got to go and try to f- fix them or figure out you know what's causing this type of deal. Like, th- and not everybody can see it. Only certain people can see it, and they'll see things like, oh, there's a ghost in the trash. And you'll have to go figure out what exactly they're talking about, but it's these <laughs> things, you know, that you're going to figure out. So it could be kind of interesting to go through that. And I wonder how much, how long to beat is, you know, how long it's going to take to beat that game. But I don't know. 
Yeah, I don't think anybody knows at this point, but yeah, there's a uh, way too much coming out. Way, way too much coming definitely, out. Definitely, definitely, way too much coming out. And I still haven't beat Final Fantasy XIV Online's main story quest for Shadowbringers. You know, we take it a break from that. We gotta get. We gotta go back to that. Well, yeah, we gotta get you through like the main, main scenario quest, the original one. You haven't even done that yet. Yeah, but... we gotta get back to that here soon. We definitely do. I uh, have another video coming out because I, I did the first raid. I'll probably actually release it when we're done recording this. But I did the first eight man. I don't. It's 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 like a primal. It's not really a raid. So you fight the one the one boss. Oh, okay. So like it's, we it's took on Ifrit. Yeah. So it's like that. It's a primal type fight. I don't know if they're calling them primals. They're it's a sin eater. So, but okay. uh. Yeah, that one was rough, and I don't think too many people like that one because of how rough it is. Uh, hmm. All eight people really got to be coordinated, otherwise it's really bad. It puts a strain on the healers. I could just see all the health just drop in and fluctuating. <laughs> I'm like, wow, I would not want to be a healer in this thing. But uh, I ended up I finally getting a group to do it, so it, uh, yeah, maybe it'll be easier by the time you get to it. <laughs> Yeah, we'll have to try it out. Sorry. Yeah, we'll have to try it out here soon. Um, just, uh, but we got to get back to it. You know, I've had to take a little bit of time uh, away just to deal with some outside stuff. But uh, yeah, that stuff happens, man. Um, you know, I've uh, been playing. Uh, I went back to Dragon Age Origins because I usually go back to that about every other year. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm playing through it, but you, get, you guys will get definitely get to see how and how well an old game plays on a new system like the graphics don't always load in it, it it drops so i have to keep i'm tinkering with the the i keep tinkering with the settings and stuff it, to, to find the perfect um uh, environment in which it'll play in so it's driving me nuts just like with uh the old republic i was i was just i got tired of messing with the settings on it I eventually i had to finish it but <laughs> yeah so, so much stuff to do. You haven't seen this yet, but I restarted uh, the Legend of Heroes tra Trails of Cold Steel. Started on the stream, but uh, the streams had issues, so I decided that I was enjoying that game so much that I wanted to go back and do a Let's Play series on it. So I've got three episodes in the can that I've got to edit and put out, and I'm going to continue making some more of those because I really like that game. I'm probably going to put Fire Emblem's Three Houses aside because it didn't grab me. I don't know why. It just did not grab me. So i oh, probably okay. put that aside for a bit and go to Trails of Cold Steel until the next game comes out and we start that. So maybe Astral Chain will be the next one. But, yeah. 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 I don't know. Lots of stuff on the pot so we'll yeah on the fire we'll, we'll we gotta move stuff around a little bit but we'll definitely get it done well yeah and uh you know we're gonna still have streams we're still gonna have odd episodes that we're working on so yeah we're gonna have that round table yep the round table it did uh, really well fan was great so yes. um yes fan if you're watching thanks again for hanging out with us for oh yeah the Definitely. two hours that you did, um, we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of fun. So hopefully we can broaden that. Yeah, we'll get more people in and get some more. I, I while we were doing it, I already came up with ways that we can improve the format. So uh, you know me, I'm always looking to improve. So. No doubt. But uh, so we we got that um, coming up and. Uh, maybe I'll get one of these games that's coming out this week and do like a first look video. Okay. So, and should have plenty of stuff coming out. Sounds good. All right. Anything else from you over there? We. No, no. We covered everything. To... Awesome. I think we're looking good. Yeah, I'm wondering how long this video went because I wasn't really paying attention to the time. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, I don't know. We covered a lot. So, all right, yes, did. until next episode, Static Buzz and Oz, we're out. See you guys later. Take care, everybody.
Bye.